having the administrative state make this determination on a constitutional right. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Sell. Ms. Brownlee, you're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, Mr. Burke, we've discussed this bill several times in, in this committee, and um, I think on, on my side of the aisle, we have said, you know, we are, if there's any way in which we can improve upon due process, we are open and willing to, to look at it. I think the chairman has made it pretty clear that there is a pretty extensive already uh, process uh, for due process. Um, I guess my question is to you, is there anything that you would recommend uh, to this panel of how we can improve due process from where we are today? Yes, ma'am. I can tell you that VA is always committed and willing to collaborate with Congress on ways to improve. Um, happy to get, you know, outside of the hearing staff level to, to connect and communicate on ways that we may be able to improve. Okay. And so um, how many... Uh, do, do, can you quantify or do you have the data to know that how many veterans have used the due process and in, in the various steps to um, reverse uh, the opinion of the VA? So I, I can I can speak to, to two things and I think what you may be wanting more specific information is the actual relief process. Uh, all decisions from VA come with a due process period with respect to the finding of incompetency and those that want to seek relief from that, I will tell you that the average age of the individual in our fiduciary program is 73. The average age of the per person that seeks relief from being placed on the NICS list is 59. Um, we had an FY22, we had 33 individuals seek relief. Um, of those 33, there were 12 that based on submission of new evidence had their competency level restored. And that was an FY22. We're on pace this year for very similar numbers. So it's not a large number of veterans that are seeking relief. When they do, they're significantly younger than the average age of the person in the fiduciary program. Um, and uh, again, there is an avenue even outside of due process where the relief process itself has resulted in determinations of the removal of the incompetency status. And when we report the NICs, we report th three things. Those that need to be added to the list based on the finding of incompetency, those that need to be removed from the list because they have been since found to be competent, and then three, those that need to be removed from the list because they, have, they, they are deceased. Uh, th thank you for that. Um, do you have um, you know, evidence-based uh, data that supports the issue that this process indeed saves lives? Um, I can take that for the record and, and certainly provide you with a more detailed response. Thank you. And so uh, from, uh, from your vantage point, how many veterans do you know who have had their firearms confiscated um, by the VA? So I know right now we have a, approximately 109,000 active beneficiaries. Um, in our program, and those names would have been referred, obviously, to uh, to NICS. Right, but does VA have the authority to 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 um, confiscate firearms? Uh, the VA has no authority to confiscate. We merely have a reporting responsibility. So, and do you know how many veterans uh, who have a, who have attempted to purchase a firearm who were denied because they have a fiduciary at the VA? I don't have that data, ma'am. Um, I have no more questions. I'll yield back. Thank you. Dr. Mellon-Riggs, recognized for five minutes.